we would not be a good neighbor by um, um, in, in asking our residents to be free and, and our neighbors not be free because I think a lot of our residents also pay, I do not pay when they go and use parks that are maintained by South Portland and Portland in particular. I wish some of the communities to the north would add a few more parks um, and access to the ocean. But um, I think it's also the, a contribution that we make to the greater Portland uh, region. People have called it a gift and, and all. Um, so I won't belabor it too much, but I, I do uh, appreciate all the people and all the things that they have said. Any time we bring up this issue, the people of Cape Elizabeth turn out and the emotional comments are just amazing. Um, and I appreciate some of the counselors, particularly for being open to hearing what you have to say because I think you are in the majority. Um, so I guess that's it. I will be voting against this motion. Council Knowles. Well, I'd like to thank all the councilors for, for their comments. Uh, I'd like to thank Chairman Backer for his comment earlier when he explained that just because three of us councilors were on the pay and display committee, that doesn't mean that we were in favor of the pay and display system. We were given the charge that if we were to implement a pay and display system, what was the best way that we could do that? And if you look in the record from when uh, we set that committee in order, I had stated that I was not in favor of the fees in the park. Uh, I would like to thank Councillor Lynch, who put a great deal of work into this um, and has really championed this effort in the best of intentions to try and help improve the park, find funding for the park. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor Dill, uh, number one, for her very eloquent remarks. I think they were well thought out, and I think she's honestly trying very hard to give forth what she honestly feels is the best way to help fund some of the things going on around town, especially given the tight uh, budget season that we've just had. Now, I also, and probably most of all, want to thank you, the public, for coming tonight. Because I had come here tonight uh, planning to have to vote in the minority. And because you came tonight and gave such a strong showing, I can vote in the majority and vote against the fees. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to say something briefly. You know, I've sat at a lot of these hearings over the years, and you know, just because a counselor agrees or disagrees with you doesn't mean that they're right or wrong. Reasonable people can disagree on this issue. You know, I've had my own opinion on this issue for years, and it's never changed. I respect very deeply the counselors who are willing to put forward proposals and who look at the tax issue. As, as councilors have alluded to, the council was attacked just a few months ago at the school budget hearings by people who wanted fees for Fort Williams. For those of you that came to those meetings, it was over and over and over, we need fees for Fort Williams, we need fees for Fort Williams. Those, folk, those folks are out there. And, you know, and that's one reason folks you know, are not necessarily right or wrong. You know, the, the, whole, the whole issue that, you know, that there haven't been creative thoughts I have file cabinets full of ideas from committees that Steve Simons was on in 1976 when, when he was one of the folks that, that uh, really made this a park. It was his committee that voted. Herbie Dennison was director of public works. They used to call it the, the, the Department of Fort Williams. They were down there so much. Ruth Pitsley here, who was involved in getting the garden as you go into the park, uh, was involved in that. Uh, Betty Crane. Did, did all the, the work to get Battery Blair restored, and, and Tina over here with getting the playgrounds. Th there are tons of people who have gotten creative ideas, and the reason no fee proposal has ever passed, it isn't because of the lack of creative ideas, 
it's because of the, there's been public in the input, there's been debate. So I, I just, I'm just, to be honest, I'm very disappointed. Not with the council vote. I agree with the council vote. I've indicated that to them privately over and over. But I'm disappointed that there isn't more respect that folks could have different opinions. I want to make one other comment. Uh, because I, I strongly believe in our civic responsibility. TD Bank North was, was kind of criticized earlier this, this evening. And there was applause and, you know, it was a week ago. They brought over 5,000 runners to the town of Cape Elizabeth. 5,000 runners. 600 of those individuals who finished the race were citizens of Cape Elizabeth. David and I happened to serve on the board of that road race. You, know, you can say we have a conflict of interest, but you know, we don't get any money from it. That bank donates over $150,000 a year to put a world-class event in Cape Elizabeth that is greatly enjoyed by the residents of Cape Elizabeth. I, I think we ought to applaud Bank North, TD Bank North, and, and give a little bit of recognition to what they do. One final point. In November, as been alluded to, there's something on the ballot called Tabor. There's, there's a committee that uh, is here in town that's looking at the Tabor issue, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. The group that authored Tabor gave me a spreadsheet that said if Tabor had been voted in five years ago and there'd been no local overrides, the budgets would be $3 million less in Cape Elizabeth than they are now. And I just think, you know, and I, I've, I've gotten emails from folks in this room complaining about taxes, but when you vote on Tabor, you need to remember what you said tonight. You know, we, we heard Susan Gilbert Hirshon earlier talk about the effect on her neighborhood when the citizens voted in, in connectivity. We need to think of the consequences of all that we say and do. And I, you know, I, some of you may not like this, but I think, you know, the council, you know, does respectfully listen to views. They do take things into account. And I think the vote shows that. And, and I applaud the ones that, that vote, will vote for this, and I applaud the ones who will vote against it. Uh, I think, you know, they're all good citizens and trying to do the best for the community. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And I should um, say publicly that we on the council are very proud of our town manager, and we support him entirely. So thank you. All those in favor of the motion as made and seconded? Opposed? The motion fails. Three in favor, four opposed. Yeah. Councilor Backer, um, I have a question. Is it appropriate at this point? Could I presume we can make another motion um, having to do with this? matter. It's been suggested by a number of members of the public. Mr. Tri Tripler had suggested it first to me. And then it's been taken up several times here as to whether this should be sent to public referendum. And I've been on the council seven years, and I think I've had at least seven, or sometimes it's twice a year, so maybe 14 discussions of this matter. And um, those of us on all sides of the matter always talk about our feel for what the public thinks and then we have public hearings and people come and and that's great that's the public process it's the democratic process it's a good one but I'm intrigued by this idea of sending this out to referendum and so um, for the purpose of discussion I'd like to make the motion that we consider placing this as a citizen referendum um, on the November ballot I'll second the motion because I think it, it is important to discuss it. I, I thought it was a good idea. Um, I think it would bring closure. I'm not sure. And I have questions I want to ask the manager. And so, and, do, so and, do I. And that is why I was making. But and maybe Deborah so Lane about it. the election process. I don't know if there's time to do it and wording. And there's all kinds of things. And we don't want to rush something either. So, um, but, so for the purposes of discussion and that's why that's why I made just to motion. be clear that's why I make I made the motion so that we could discuss it I have not come to a final conclusion on this matter because it's just likewise 
come up. Here we have a motion and a second. And is the motion to put the pay display recommendation on the November yes. referendum? Yes, the pay display. Okay. Uh, as it appears. As it appears here. Now, okay. Discussion on the motion. I, I guess I'd like to ask the town manager, maybe Deborah Lane, whoever can answer. Um, I, I'm not sure whether the timing works for, for November. We're already in August. Um, wording is tricky. Mm -hmm. um, I am intrigued by the idea because I think it will bring closure. It's a divisive issue that it doesn't seem to be resolved. There's a different crowd in the chamber in April than there is <laughs> in August. And, and that's how it's been as long as I've been on the council. Um, so can it work for November? And if not, what are the better, more responsible time parameters? Through uh, you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next council meeting, September 11th, it, it is very tight. Uh, however, you know, if we understood that it was the will of the council, we'd have everything all ready to go. The, the attorney would prepare the ballot question. You'd formally vote it on the 11th. The ballots would be designed, and uh, everything would go. But it is, it's tight. The absentees are generally available six weeks before the election. The election is, you know, it, it's tight. You, there's only about a four or five day time frame in there, but we could, we could work to have everything in place, ready to go, uh, if the council so voted. Councilor Fritz. Well, I guess it's, um, this issue just never goes away. It never <laughs> gets finalized. And um, I mean, people turn out and say what they think, they always turn out in these kind of numbers. I don't think there's another whole group of people who um, would come out, you know, with, if we had this another day. I think you'd still get the same sentiment. Um, it, it, I don't know how many times the council has turned it down. I think maybe four times. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, the fees have lost tonight. I, I think that ought to be it. You know, uh, let's not do it again. It's, it's the proposal of, you know, the people who didn't make the issue, and so I will be voting against it. I, it's no more neighborly on the ballot than it, than it is up here uh, tonight, an issue. Anybody? Councilor Moles? I'm all for public input. And there's no greater way of getting public input than at the uh, ballot box. But I also don't see the point of spending the money it takes for the town to add this as a question to the ballot, the legal time, et cetera, when it's, a, in my opinion, a foregone cl conclusion. And, and once again, I sincerely thank Councilor Lynch, Councilor Kayada, and especially Councillor Dill as a new councillor for uh, stepping forward and, and making her views felt because it's tough to sit up here and, you know, say how you feel on an issue when it's, when it's unpopular. I do it all the time. Uh, so I, I don't at this point see the need to go to a referendum this November. You know, perhaps we could discuss some other options over the next several months and see what we could come up with for something in the you know, a future council meeting. But I, I think it's been clear what the people want. Uh, the emails we've gotten, I think I only got one email in favor. It, it's been a deluge of disfavor for this issue. And Councilor Lynch is correct. Just a couple months ago, there were people standing here yelling at us saying, find a way to find more revenue, find a way to find more revenue. And this is a way to do it. But in not in my opinion, the the best way to do it. Uh, but I, uh, again, I really appreciate the counselors that stepped forward and said that they'd like to see it done this way. But again, I don't see the need to spend uh, the town's money on a, a referendum at, at this time. Councilor McKinney. All right. Well, I, um, I'll, I will support the referendum. 
And the reason I will is be not because I think um, it will necessarily pass, but I think that Council Lynch is correct and, and Council Swift Kiata in the sense that this is a very divisive issue. It's come up over and over again. And I think that the people should be able to choose. It's one of those issues that if we make the decision, whichever way we go, it's not going to set well with people, too many people. And I think, it's, I think this is the type of issue that should go to referendum. And if the people vote it down, so be it. If the people vote for it, then we will, you know, we'll deal with it. But I think that people should have a right to um, express their views on an issue that appears to have so much um, interest and emotion behind it. So I will vote in favor of the referendum. Well, seeing no one else jumping forward, um, I will also support the motion to put it out for public ballot. I think that any time we can give the entire voting populace of Cape Elizabeth the opportunity to weigh on an issue. No matter how apparently one-sided it may be, if there... If this is a new motion before the council, is there not an opportunity for public comment? Uh, no. This is not a public hearing on this motion. The public hearing was on the pay display um, recommendation. There is not a public hearing on every motion that comes before the council. We, the public hearing is concluded. We are debating a separate motion at the moment. And if you would be kind enough and gracious enough to permit us to complete it, we'd appreciate it. Not at this time. This is not an opportunity for public comment and hearing. Um, if the council wishes to do it, we'll have a hand. It's on its agenda. So I would like to, I support the motion. I'm willing to give the voters an opportunity to weigh in, yes or no. However, the vote falls, and if more than half of the voters in this town would like to see a pay display system implemented at the fort, I see no reason why we should shy away from that or be fearful of that vote. Although personally, as a counselor, I have voted against it. Um, if in fact this is set for um, a ballot question in November, um, am I correct? This will be set for a public hearing there will next? There will be a public hearing prior to the vote. Public hearing prior to the vote, probably next month at our September meeting. Could be September 11th. Maybe September or the October meeting, but perhaps September. So there will be an opportunity for public comment, but it's not tonight. Is there anyone else who would like to speak who hasn't yet spoken on this motion? Well, I have a question. Um, it's. I wouldn't mind having a little bit more time to reflect and think about the referendum question. I think I'm generally in favor of it. And my question is, is there a significant cost incentive to do it? It seems like there would be, but I want to hear the, the answer um, from the manager. If we didn't do it in November, the referendum, would there be, obviously we'd, we'd have more people show up at the uh, polling place, I think, but in terms of the cost to the town, is there a significant difference in doing it in November or another time? It, it, not really. That's, you, know, you have a programming cost for the ballot, you've got the attorney cost for developing the question, and then it's simply a case of the number of paper ballots that you print based on your assumption of, of how many voters that there may be. But are, are you suggest, can I ask a question, are you suggesting a special election not in November, for instance a January election? I, I was just curious about what the impact of, of having a little bit more time to think about this would have on the process. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was just curious about what that. Can I say something? Yeah. You know, your vote tonight would be simply to ask us, which I think the motion is, is to prepare the formal question, and it'd be at the next meeting of the council on September 11th, you'd actually have the formal vote once you'd have to approve the ballot question. Okay and put that so there'd still be the opportunity between now and September 11th
for the council to say, no, we don't want it on the ballot. Yes, we want it on the ballot. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I will be supporting the motion tonight regarding the referendum then. Are we ready to vote, Councilor Moles? So just to get clarification, what we're voting on now is to set a vote at the next meeting on whether we should put whatever language is brought up, well, this language, we've already written it, uh, whether we want to take it to referendum or not. So, we're, so what we're saying now is we're going to vote at the next meeting on this issue, if that's correct. That's not my understanding of the motion. Is that what it has become? I understood the motion to be to set the issue for a public referendum. Yes. I understand, Mr. That's Chairman, if I might. I understand that motion as well. I just point out that there will need to be a subsequent legal motion at the next meeting that formally adopts the ballot question and that formally sets the vote and does the other legal requirements necessary to put something on the ballot. So all of those things cannot be done this evening because we need an attorney to prepare the ballot and we, we need the, the warrant and those other things that you legally need to have. So at the next the meeting we'll be f approving the formal language of the ballot question? Yes, and that would take a, a majority vote of the council. My, yeah. my motion, if I could clarify, my motion was to, is to um, approve setting this matter for public referendum at the November election. And I understand that we will have to form, have a second vote to adopt the specific ballot language at our next meeting, the September meeting. So part of my motion is to have the manager or whoever he designates help prepare that language so that we can adopt specific language. But this is, my motion is to vote for sending it uh, to public referendum. And that's what I understood the motion to be. And it would be in the same form as we uh, considered tonight, it, all the details. It is basically the, the pay display mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. pretty much laid out under item 136. But I understand that the ballot language may have to be tweaked to reflect. I don't know if you can just transport all this into a ballot question. But the, the essence of it would be essentially the same. Councilor Lynch? I understand all that, but I also want to ma make sure I'm clear. I also understand that there could be one result tonight and a different result next month. So that, in a sense, we all have time to think about it, hear from the public, and discuss the issue of whether or not the issue should be put out to the public. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. In September, if we can't agree on any language, then nothing's going to happen. It doesn't. That's right. Council Mullins. That's clear. Is there any appetite amongst the council to have a public hearing at the September meeting discussing this issue? I think my, I would say that a vote in November is the ultimate public hearing. I mean, it's a chance for every citizen, every registered voter in town to weigh in on it. I had a number of people say to me tonight on both sides of the issue that they couldn't be here tonight because they were on vacation or whatever. Um, but through the public voting process, the ballot process, everybody can participate. And so I, I view the, uh, an actual referendum vote superseding the public hearing. Council Mills. If that's the common feeling of the council, given that we have to, given that we have to make another vote on September 11th on the actual legal language, rather than vote tonight and vote again, I would propose, in a friendly way, that we table this motion until the September meeting, take it off the table, and vote on both of them uh, in I would order not accept at that, that friendly amendment at that meeting. Is there it's a motion to table? There being no discussion on a to motion second. to table, is there a second? Second. 
All those in favor of the motion to table? Two in favor. Opposed? Five opposed. The motion to table fails. All those in favor of the motion as made by Councilor Swift Kayata to set the pay display recommendation for public referendum in November. Opposed? The motion is approved. Five in favor. Councilors Fritz and Malls opposed. Does. I have one other <laughs> issue. How many times? Okay, if we can wait just a minute and let people who want to leave leave. Well, it's on this issue, so. Okay, Councilor Lynch. Um, I had talked. Councilor um, Swift Kayata had raised with me um, an amendment and had asked whether I would be in favor of. Yeah an amendment she planned to propose tonight on pay display that would have granted a parking decal for town employees, town and school employees. And I had told her that I would be, fa I would certainly favor that amendment. So I don't know whether we would need to include that tonight in the proposal or whether we can make any changes if, if I might next comment. month. Thank you very much. I completely, in all the discussion tonight, I completely forgot that. But it had been suggested by a citizen that volunteer firefighters who are not residents of Cape Elizabeth and then also Cape Elizabeth employees would um, be in the same situation as volunteers at the Lighthouse so that if volunteers at the Lighthouse were to get a free volunteers at the Lighthouse who were not Cape residents so that they would not have to um, pay parking fees. And so... Make the motion. I would like to move that that be added to the language, the concept of the pay display thing, that program that is considered, that the manager will consider writing up. Second. Later became an issue. Did it not Discussion say on the motion? They did not say someplace in the proposal that the council would set fees, that we don't have to be detailed about all of this. I mean, I don't think you want it to be so detailed that this is in stone and has to go back to referendum every time you want to change That's them. a good point. Well, I think, yeah, I don't recall that it, says that specifically, but I may have forgotten. Um, but it does mention in number six that non-resident gift shop and museum volunteers should be given parking passes and tenants should be assigned spaces. So I was thinking that the first part of that, it should be non-resident gift shop and museum volunteers as well as non-resident town employees and non-resident volunteer firefighters. Could, could I make a... Yeah, I, I'd like to say something. I'm reluctant to support any changing, sort of tweaking of the proposal as it's made. I mean, there are any number of things in here that if I was writing it, I'd write it slightly differently, and I imagine that's true of any number of us. I might even change the dollar amounts. I mean, I'm inclined not to... I'm inclined to favor a different dollar amount than is in here if I was to support it, which I don't. But. My point is, I think that once we start tampering with it, okay. there's no end, perhaps, to what people might suggest for further amendments of it before it goes out to ballot. That's, that makes That's fine. That makes sense to me. And if it were adopted by the town, I think it's especially given with Tabor, potentially, maybe, coming along in the fall, it's easier to stop charging somebody a fee than it would be to institute right. new fees. So yeah. I'm fine with that. Council but Mills. thank you, Councillor Lynch, for bringing that up. I completely can, can that just be an administrative function that the town manager takes care of as far as who's getting these? 
decals, the firemen, et cetera? Isn't it I don't know that, how to answer that. Isn't it a real, really a non-issue at this point? I mean, I, I just think. I'm fine with dropping. We have a lot, it's a very divisive issue. You know, it's not like we voted seven to zero. Mm -hmm. Four to three is a, a bare majority. I think it, you know, we've come to the conclusion that a referendum's a good idea, then everyone can speak their piece. If they want it, they can have it. If they don't, then, then so be it. I think to add anything to it, you're just complicating it for I mean, unnecessarily. You've changed my mind. I'm in agreement. And you've changed mine. <laughs> Withdrawn. So never mind. The motion and the second is with, are withdrawn? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, just the motion. I'm sorry. I don't know about the second. I'm sorry I raised it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm right. having a heat stroke oh, here. It's getting late. Yeah. And yeah, I'm about to have a heat stroke too. Well, that concludes the first item on our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I would move we table the second. Well, no, I guess there's some things in here we can't table. Yeah, it was already tabled. Um, <laughs> the high school access road we can't. to to the ordinance yeah. The, um, we're going to move on to item number 137-2006, which is in a which are proposed amendments no, really to the traffic regulations I'm requesting um, that they be referred to the ordinance committee. So moved. With a public hearing scheduled for Monday, September 11, 2006. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to withdraw the public hearing recommendation, yes. but there are, there are aspects of this that do not at all relate to Fort Williams. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to have this referred to the Ordinance Committee so at least they can look at the aspects mm -hmm. that, that don't relate to Fort Williams and uh, see if they wish to move those forward for setting a future public hearing. Okay. But can we move this proposal without the Fort Williams element of it? just deal with the high school yes there's, there's more than just the high school yeah. too I, I the I'd ordinance like, committee really needs to look at it yeah. I'd like but, the whole just, penalty provision but I, just to be um, I mean the ordinance committee has two people in favor and one opposed well, I, you know I don't want it sent there with the Fort Williams part in it how about if we assure you that it's already been drafted in here. If we assure you that we are only going to report back the non-Fort Williams provisions until such time as there is or is not a yeah, just, if vote. I might, th there are provisions that need to be adopted that have nothing to do with paid display yeah. that are still okay. within Fort Williams. Okay, so, oh, so let me correct that. Yeah. So what's, we, what's the manager's recommendation? To refer to the Ordinance Committee and to trust that they won't use this opportunity to try to revive the paid display thing. <laughs> Which that we mechanism. will not do. You, you never know. <laughs> okay. So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? The motion is approved. Six in favor with Councilor Dill absent. <laughs> Deep stroke. Um, wastewater. Item number 123-2006, wastewater submeters. This matter was tabled from the July meeting. I move Councilor to remove Spokeata. from the table. A motion Second. to remove from the table. Second. Second, Councillor Lynch. Do we have a? I'll, I'll move that um, to speed this along. That we have of the three choices that we have: have no meter program, have 24 annual. We, we have to remove it from the table before we can discuss. Oh, I'm sorry. That's sorry. I thought it was. The motion is to just. I'm sorry, we haven't voted on the motion to remove it from the table? No. no. I apologize. It hasn't been seconded yet. It was seconded. It was seconded. All those in favor of the motion to, remo to remove it from the table? table. Opposed? Six in favor. Councilor Moles opposed to removing it from the table. It is on the table. On the table. Do we have a motion? I will move that the um, town or that the Portland Water District assessment be for $24 annual cost to be paid for by people who have submeters. Second. Mm -hmm. 
Discussion on the motion? I just think that that is the fair way to assess uh, is, you know, people who have the service. Um, it should not be assessed all sewer customers that don't take advantage of the, the service of having a subway. Is, is there anything that you would yeah, like I, to I, add? I would like to this? briefly say, I know there's a lot of concern about this, and Mr. Dennison in particular is concerned about it. I still, you know, I, the, they need an indication of water district between now and I think the deadline September 1st of whether or not we're going to continue in the submeter program. Uh, you know, I think we still need to ask the water district some tough questions in terms of uh, why they're charging us a dollar for customer service aspect of it when we're, they're already providing the customer service. You know, really what this is, is what they're proposing to add $17,000 for our assessment for this. And if you really look at it, we're already paying some of that. So what I would like to have is that you authorize me to sign the letter saying we're going to continue to participate in the program, understanding that it could cost as much as $24. And at some point, you're going to have to need to allocate that cost by amending the sewer rates. But that the understanding is I'm still going to try to negotiate with the district so that, so that the cost impact is less than the impact that they're recommending now. Most of the other communities seem to be agreeable to this, so it makes our bargaining position tough. But, uh, but your rec I, I still want to debate the issue with them. But, but your recommendation. You need to sign the form to continue to participate in the program, or else everyone in town will lose their ability to have a submeter read and, and defer how it's going to be paid for and understand that we're still going to debate. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that it is um, to me. Um, yeah, it's, defi so it's definitely not to me. If, are you suggesting that we, uh, based on the motion, which is to have the $24 annual cost paid by those with submeters, uh, be approved? I'm asking. Or that it be amended to add something more to it? Yeah. I'm asking, there's a letter here that we address back to the Water District. This letter is to serve as authorization for the Portland Water District to take appropriate action to make the existing wastewater submeters compatible with the new radio-based meter reading system being installed by the Portland Water District. It is understood the district will purchase and install the necessary equipment. The cost will be financed by the district and the related annual debt service payment will be included in the district's wastewater assessment. The district will be informed if it if it is decided to request a submeter surcharge be assessed to recover the cost relating to funding the wastewater submeter program. I'm proposing we, you authorize me to sign the letter, but that still leaves open the possibility of debating uh, with the district the exact Yes, and... And does it still leave open for debate how that cost, whatever it is, however it's negotiated, is apportioned among total. sewer users? Totally, because this letter says the district will be informed if it has decided to request a submeter surcharge be assessed to recover the cost related to funding the wastewater submeter program. They, this would not go into effect that assessment until January 1, so there's plenty of opportunity between now and then to look at that issue. I'm glad, Michael, you're raising it because I think this dollar operating cost, which I highlighted, is bogus. What this means is they want to charge, or they're trying to recover some charges for answering the phone and saying, yes, that's what your meter said, or no, that's not what your meter said. Well, customers are already paying for that. And you have a meter for the purpose of being able to call them up. So this is really overreaching, I think, the, the dollar operating cost. I understand the hardware, but the idea that when the, the sewer customers are not already paying for this is nutsy and bogus. Council <laughs> uh, I, I, I agree. Strongly about this. <laughs> I agree with the manager that we have to give them an answer and that we obviously want to continue with the submeter program. Um, and I, I think Councillor Fritz has probably picked the right answer because if someone has a submeter, they have it for a reason. They want to take advantage of the fact of measuring. The, uh, the two water flows in and out of their building so they can get the right fee. Uh, but what I, my concern is that uh, we should be work, haven't, I don't think we've workshopped this issue. It would be nice to workshop this 
issue before we come down to a, a final vote, although, again, I, I'm fine with answer number two. But, but really, my, uh, my complaint to the Portland Water District, twofold. One, uh, as a town, we have representatives to the Portland Water District. They should be here answering questions for us. And two, I, correct me if I'm wrong, is the current system broken? Why are we fixing a system that's not necessarily broken? Why are they changing technology if, we're, if we currently have a sub-meter program in place? State. Isn't that what the letter said? I think it's they said a lot of the, the equipment, the meters, have, are about 15 years old. The something. PUC, it says it's required by main PUC regulations. I, I was wondering if perhaps uh, Councillor Fritz would accept a friendly amendment of um, the portion of hers, rather than ju just say have the $24 annual cost paid by those with submeters. How about have the annual, annual cost paid by those with submeters? That would be and fine. And that's whatever it's determined, whatever the manager can negotiate it down to. So your amendment really get, authorizes the manager to and, negotiate it as well? And authorizing the manager to sign the letter and keep negotiating? I'll second your amendment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does seem when they come around to, I, I would think the operational costs are partly to come around and check the meter and read it with, like they read the, the water meter now. And I would think they could do them both at the same time so there wouldn't be an additional cost. I, you know, I don't know what all their costs well, are, but it meeting. does seem... Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Chairman. So, uh, so would that satisfy uh, the manager? It, it, it does. I, I just want to be clear everyone understands the technology. They want to be able to simply press a button on Douglas Street in Portland mm -hmm. and it'll automatically read all of the meters in their system and they won't have to have meter readers go, go to any home mm -hmm. unless for some reason there's an indication the meter's not reading. That's what we've come to is the, the communication that uh, Folks in the audience really love to see progress on it. Maybe don't, but uh, there's, you know, it's it's just the advance of technology, and they're looking to replace old technology with new. That's not people intensive. And, and what you're trying to do is negotiate the right price. Yeah, right. Yeah. Makes sense. So if we can clarify where we are in the motion, um, the original motion I think was by Councillor Fritz, seconded by I'm not sure who, Councillor Swift Kayata. I forget. Then Councillor Swift Kayata made a motion to amend Which was fine. the original motion, accepted by Councillor Fritz. Um, so the motion now is to authorize the town manager to sign the form of letter that has been submitted um, and to designate uh, or to negotiate. It, it, to negotiate the rate, and whatever that rate may be, um, to approve having that annual cost paid by those with submeters. Excellent summary. Let's vote Discussion? on the amendment. Do we need to vote on the amendment? No. No. Okay. She accepted it. Okay. Mr. All those in favor of the motion as amended, do we need something first? Mr. Dennison, I just want to, he's got his hand. I'm sorry. Recognize you had approached me before we even started with the opportunity to speak when this came up and I told you you could. I apologize. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Thank you for your patience and no putting your hand up. Okay, I'm, I'm one of them sub meter readers. I agree with Councilman Knowles. Where are the representation from the Water District? I agree with Mike. I think he's right. But now, I paid for a meter sub meter once. It didn't meet the standards when it wore out, so I had to upgrade and pay a second meter a second time within the last five years. So it's plenty of time the water district bit the bullet and absorbed the operating costs themselves that they want. And I think Mike's got the handle on it. They want to be able to sit in their office and push a button, which is good. They're going to do it for the water side, do it for the sub-meter side. The other question I would throw out to Mike while he's negotiating with him is what does it cost to buy this meter installed yourself like we've had to? They, they didn't install these sub-meters, they sold them to us. 
And now it's like you know, no answers, and it's like Council Knowles says, where is your representation? You got one of the highest user fees. You just raised my sewer fees, and now the water is telling you got to raise it to me again. I mean, you know, there's a limit. The water, and the very thing that way back when we organized this was afraid of, when the water district was better equipped to handle the sewerage, we say where. But who was going to mine the water district? How much labor they got involved, how many fancy trucks with two cars with only one or two people, you know, uh, uh, to keep the cost down. And, and, and I think these things are going astray. Mike's aware of it, and I appreciate your thoughts. And to add to his comments, I, I think it's wrong for them to spread it out over 17 years. It's, this is going to take them 17 years to pay that back. You know, I Isn't paid $120 or something like that each time for my each meter. Where's the technology going to be 17 years from now? They're, yeah. they're just spreading out. They should, as Mr. Dennison has pointed out, and again, as the old saying goes, it's hard to fight City Hall. It's probably hard to fight the PUC as well to say, hey, you know, you should offer it to people just to buy it and not have to pay it over time. It's probably cheaper for them to buy it, install it, and then pay it over time. And the I think he's right. going to produce the savings by not having, I think I read in the paper tonight, I heard in the news, all but two. Like, they got eight meter readers, they'll be cut into two. Well, okay. It's like Councilor Fritz just said, you know, your sub meters now, that guy walks up, and he plugs it on to the water side, and he plugs it on to the sewer side. It's right side by side. It has to be. That's their rules. Yeah. And uh, it's just another way of trying to leech and put you guys in a hot seat so we can bad them. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. <laughs> Good to see you, Herbie. <laughs> Back to the vote. All those in favor of the motion? Well, no. oh. All right, I'm in favor of the motion. <laughs> I wanted, to, I wanted to complain some more, but it's late. Seven in favor. It's unanimous. Seven in favor, none opposed. The motion, as amended, is Chair. approved. Chairman, per the council rules, we need a motion to take up items after 11 p.m. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the council rules so that we can take up an item after 11. I second the motion. All those in favor of the motion? Get it on. <laughs> opposed? Reluctantly. Not, not Six in favor. favor. Councilor Moles opposed. The motion is approved. Especially we are moving on to. This text drives me crazy. You take a walk on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 139 2006. Application about, for. About 138. You got the ass cap. About one, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Nice I, 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 my apologies. <laughs> Just Item know. number 138-2006, ASCAP request. <laughs> now, I, before we do this, I'd like to just ask the council, when, when the hour gets late, the discussion at times tends, tends to degenerate, <laughs> conversations wander, and it ends up taking us longer and we're less productive than we are earlier in the evening. Agreed. So it's already late. We all want to go home. But if we can just focus our attention for a little bit to get through this, mm -hmm. um, I'd appreciate it. So. Um, Mr. Chairman, on, on the ASCAP fee, it's only a $280 item. Uh, the council's discussed it before. I've discussed it with councilors. Uh, the the uh, ASCAP has us in their radar sites, and I would, I would recommend we make the annual investment of $280 then index to the consumer price index. I make a motion. We. Uh, accept the uh, recommendation of the manager and provide the $280 fee for the ASCAP request. Second. Discussion on the motion. Councilor Fritz. Uh, could you tell me then where it is among all of these things that they suggest? We don't have any airports, we don't have any ice rinks, state parks, zoos. Uh, where are we playing music that if I'm understanding is not does not fall in the category of not covered. I mean, which is anything that's a radio broadcast or on cable TV. Um, where are we using the uh, music that would be copied? I remember Henry Berry playing the organ here uh, <laughs> on the 100th anniversary of the town hall. That's it, his versions of those no. songs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, 
it's music. Yeah. even de minimis use. Yeah. You know, graduations, Marching. events at the fort with his music. It doesn't take hardly anything when you read through all those different materials to to get us into that situation. And uh, you know, you can vote no, and then we're probably going to be in a legal case with the ASCAP folks based on their previous correspondence and their persistence. And I think it's in our best interest to uh, to hold our nose and do it. I think they had very threatening language with their legalese, and and I think that this is a scam. I really do. Uh, if I could. Councilor Dill. Well, just as somebody who um, comes out of the um, Pond Cove School, and here's the baseball team blaring all different kinds of rock and roll songs over the loudspeakers, and sees the marching bands in schools and at the community services, uh, various acro um, aerobics and other classes where there's um, music playing in a public building. I just think there's a number of examples where there's music played in the town property, and um, I just think it would be foolish to get too hung up on the legalese and not pay the $280 and be done with it. Councilor Swift Kayada. I will be supporting this be, uh, for a number of reasons, but um, mostly because people in the creative arts, people who are writers, people who compose music, make their living from their creations. And they, I think they have the right to be paid for the use of their property. And it's just, this is the same as, you know, downloading somebody's music, it, not paying, is the same as downloading somebody's music and not paying for it. And I think artists need to be supported. And I think it's the law, and so I will be supporting it. Because otherwise, we're ripping off artists, musical artists. So, and that's all I'll say. I'm afraid to do this, but <laughs> Councilor Lynch? <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be supporting this, not because I disagree with Councillor Swift Kayada um, or Councillor Dill. I agree with them both, but I don't think it applies to towns. And I have looked through this list of cases that they have sent, and their citation for precedence is jukeboxes and clubs and clubhouses and cruise ships and health fitness centers, and they're all commercial. And um, I just, for the life of me, um, can't see anything in all the case law that they've sent us that supports it. And I continue to believe that if we hire a musician, um, the musician is responsible. If the town were to hire a musician, the musician is responsible. If the school band is playing music, they've bought the sheet music, and so they've paid the royalties. So. I guess I, I think the artists need to be compensated, um, but I think this is really just not applicable to um, municipal government. And they haven't shown me a case that says it is. I'm going to support this. For the $280, um, I don't see how we can justify taking up any more of the town manager's time communicating with these folks. That's why they do this. And, well, that may be why they do this. Um, and to the extent that, that it, it appears that there is, in fact, some legal obligation, as tenuous as it may be, if it is the law, I think as counselors we have an obligation to uphold the law, and I'll support it. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Five in favor, I'm sorry, four in favor. Councilors <coughs> Fritz, Lynch, and Moles opposed. Item number 139-2006, application for tax abatement. Chairman. Yes, sir, Councilor Moles. I must respectfully request the council to excuse me from this vote. On what grounds? I am on the grounds that I have intimate knowledge of the client's finance, of the person's finances, and the value of their property. Is that a conflict of interest? They're a client of mine. 
That's a oh, conflict that's a of interest. Okay. <laughs> so I will move that uh, Councilor Moles be excused from voting on this issue. Right. Second, I second that. Second, Councilor McKinney. Sure. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Six in favor, Councilor Moles abstaining. Um, Councilor Moles, you may step down Thank you. from the podium. I make a motion uh, that we. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make a motion that um, we take item 139, 2006, and deny the abatement request. Second. Um, motion by Councilor McKinney, second by Councilor Swift Kayada or Dill? I'm sorry. Swift Councilor Kayata. Swift Kayada. Thank you. Is Ann Jenis here or is there a representative here on her behalf? No. No? Okay. Uh, discussion on the motion? Councilor Swift Kayada. Just for the record, I will be. Um supporting the, the recommendation to de deny the abatement um, because municipal, according to the statutes as I understand it, municipal officers may not grant an abatement to correct an error in valuation. And that's my understanding of what the request, why her request came about. And, and it's my assumption, Mr. Chairman, that the motion included that reason because of the legal requirement that the reason needs to be included in your decision. That, that is absolutely tr correct. I, I did read it in, in its entirety earlier, and that is the reason I am <laughs> recommending we deny it. <laughs> so is, is it, um, my understanding is that the valuation of the property will go down for this next year, but there won't be an abatement for past um, uh, having, having it too high. That's, that's true, you, Mr. Chairman. That's correct. Matt has extensively researched the law, and there's a time frame within which an applicant can apply uh, to change the valuation based on a, an error or disagreement with the evaluation. Uh, that that had, had expired. What's meant by an error in the assessment is, is simply that there was just plain information. It got assessed to the wrong person. Uh, you know, something like that. This is not an error in the assessment. It's a disagreement over the valuation. Mm -hmm. okay. Matt well, educated me well. And for the reasons already stated by others, I will support the motion. All those in favor of the motion? Six in favor, none opposed. Um, which one might that be, Tina? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's my belief that that issue was left unresolved. Uh, this, this would be, in, in essence, an advisory referendum to the council at that point. Uh, th there's a requirement for an ordinance amendment that there be a public hearing. There is no requirement for a public hearing on an advisory uh, referendum, which this would be. So it would be totally up to the desire of the council on whether or not they wanted to, to set a public hearing between September 11th and the date of the vote. That's totally up to the council to determine. The council did not vote to set a public hearing as part of their motion on September 11th. It would it, be up to the chairman that evening on whether or not he wishes to entertain public comment. Public comment would be for the public's That's unresolved, Tina. You want to talk it later? It's, just, it's really unresolved. I, I, I wouldn't contemplate a, a reopening this whole public hearing 
issue of on the pay display proposal. And I think as Councillor Swift Kayata said, that's exactly what the referendum is for. That's the ultimate public hearing. Um, but that was not part of my motion to have a public hearing. The public comment was on the wisdom of perhaps of sending it to public referendum. Is what I understood that little we side discussion. We already to decided to send it, though. Yeah, I, I don't think we've. The only thing that's undecided is. We just agreed that we're going to vote on the referendum issue next month. The language. As far as putting it on the ballot. I think there's a but, but, requirement if there yeah. if the petition like if they if it was a petition and they gathered hmm. so many signatures right. there's a requirement that we have a public hearing. That's correct. But this is a different. This is a different route. scenario. Mm. Different I don't th I don't think a public we hearing is required. It. Yeah. It's not or, required, but it's or, up to the council. Or or in my opinion, necessary because a month and a half later you have the ultimate public hearing. You have a public vote on it. And this is the same issue. We just had a public hearing, and so. Right. I mean. I, I think it was. I think you're right. I think it probably still is. <laughs> well, it was not part of my motion, so. Okay, we are on to item number 140-2006, executive session request. I make a motion that uh, we, the council moves into executive session to discuss the um, Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent, Benevolent Association um, situation. And read it all. Okay. You want me to read it from the beginning, huh? <laughs> all right. To discuss MS, uh, just to enter into executive session to receive an update and to discuss negotiations involving Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association and to review an application in accordance with 36 MRSA Chapter 105, paragraph, paragraph 841, oh, in paragraph 2E. Second. I don't know what that is. It's yeah. Discussion on the motion? That's a section symbol. Well, this, I have a question. Will this be a long executive session? Do you anticipate? I can't speak for the council. The okay. <laughs> okay. Just didn't know. And um, shouldn't be. Before we vote on this, um, perhaps I should state that, um, assuming that the motion passes and I expect it will, we'll go into executive session. We will come out of executive session. However, when we come out of executive session, um, we will not be on camera and we will come out of executive session for the purpose of citizens discussion of items not on the agenda and for adjournment and do and we anticipate any vote yes we do any public we vote? do anticipate a vote on the the second item that you're going into executive session for because okay. under the law those applications have to be acted upon within 30 days okay. Okay. so all those in favor of the motion to go into executive session Opposed? Councilor Lynch, are you, is that a yes or a no? Sorry, that was a yes in favor of executive. Um, the motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. We will go into executive session. Thanks, Matt. Take it easy, Matt. Have a safe trip home. Go ahead. You had to stay at home. I know, but you, you, you didn't have to help.